It's the radio guy, Mike Prince. Welcome back to the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline. Basketball finals are set. And who better to break down that and a whole lot more going on in the world of hoops and college sports than the godfather himself, Coach Van Petaway. Sir, how you doing? And welcome back to the show. Hey, I'm doing fine, Dr. Prince. and uh, I'm happy to be here. And things are going well. Things are going well. I'm assuming that you had a wonderful Independence Day with you and the family? Yes, I did. Uh, it was a great day. It was a, a day for family. Uh, and, and with the fact that it fell on a Sunday, it was the Lord's Day also, so we, we embodied both of them. Very good. And I'm pretty sure uh, you got some leftover barbecue somewhere in the fridge, right? Oh, yeah, it, it should be a, a, a sample of everything left. So, yeah, it should be a sample. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, speaking of samples, uh, the stage is set now for the NBA Finals. We had some basketball hires in the now new SWAC edition. But let's first talk about this NBA thing. It's the Milwaukee Bucks taking on the Phoenix Suns. And uh, who would have thought this one at the beginning? Maybe more. Milwaukee, but no one could say in their right mind that Phoenix would be the last team standing from the West. Right. I don't know of anybody that, that had picked Phoenix to uh, to come out of the West. Uh, you know, everybody had um, other ideas as to who should, should come out. And, you know, with the, with this season, the way it, it uh, ended up with um, all these uncertainties, and a lot of it had to do with injuries, but, but they did what they had to do. They – they weathered the course, and I think Phoenix was, is going to be a great uh, representative of the West. And this is going to be a big series, a nice series. I think the teams are closer to each other in terms of uh, talent. I think it's evenly matched, and it's going to be a, a team that can force their will on the other will be the one that wins. And if I, had, if I was a betting man, uh, I think I had to put my money on, on Phoenix right now. Okay, now we know these are not the sexiest teams on the NBA brand. Do you think that is going to hinder those who will actually tune in to watch the entire series? No, it, it, I mean you got two two teams from smaller markets. You know the the, <clears throat> the NBA, the, the the money people, they always want the, the larger market, TV markets. But this is going to be a very interesting series, and I think. Fans, average NBA fan, they're gonna appreciate what these two teams are doing, and they'll come out. They'll support. They'll support this, this series. I think you'll see the numbers go up uh, because you got some intriguing matchups. Everybody's gonna be trying to find out if Giannis is actually healthy, and then of course uh, you got people on the sentimental side. They want Chris Paul to finally win win one. Uh, for some reason, they still think that the career is not complete unless you win a championship. This is the closest he's, ve he's ever been, and a lot of people are pulling for Chris Paul and the Phoenix Suns to uh, to, to win this thing. And uh, Chris has been, done a lot for the game of basketball. Uh, I think if you if you watch what he's done over the last few years, every team that he's been with, they have improved. And he has certainly been a part of that. So uh, this is going to be very interesting, and I look forward to watching the uh, start of the series. Do you see this going the full seven games? Yes, I can see it going. I don't think anybody's going to sweep it. Yeah, I, I can see. I can actually see it going go, going the distance because okay. both teams play well at home. Both teams play well at home, and with that being said. If you can win your home games, it's going to push you to a seventh, uh, that seventh game. Okay, okay. We're on the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline with Coach Van Petaway, basketball analyst for the Open Mic Broadcast Network. And we got that NBA, I guess, somewhat behind us for right now. But closer to home, Southwestern Athletic Conference, July 1st, introduced, accepted. It was already known throughout the nation welcoming and the entering of Bethune-Cookman and the FAM U Rattlers. Both uh, institutions are some very welcomed, as we mentioned, institutions. FAM U put on a party, uh, celebrating almost like a birthday party celebration about coming to the SWAC. 
Meanwhile, Bethune Cookman transitioning out with their longtime and lonely respected athletic director, Lynn Thompson, who we had on Sunday night. What a move was made with the double hire, we shall say, of now basketball coach slash athletic director, Reggie Theus. Did you see this one coming, coach? Not at all. Not at all. Because uh, uh, Reggie, uh, Reggie Theus, you know, he's been, uh, he hasn't been in the limelight for quite some time. Uh, I thought Thune Cookman, uh, when they made this decision to come into the SWAC, I thought they had everything in place. Uh, you know, we do know that their, their head coach left to go to uh, Tennessee Martin, I think it is. But I did not see Reggie Theus coming into the mix. And when you first, when I first heard about it, I, I had forgotten about that he had some head coaching experience. I thought that it would have been a, a monumental task to be a head coach at a Division One program and also the athletic director uh, going into uh, the fall season, which is the biggest portion of your time will be dealt with dealing with football issues. Then at the same time, you got to be able to put a team on the floor and all the things that go with that. So when I first heard about it, I, I said, uh, you know, this is going to be tough. Uh, but then when you when you do your research, you find out that uh, Reggie has already been a head coach on uh, a few levels, you know, New Mexico, uh, out in California at uh, Northside, and then, of course, uh, uh, at North Ridge, I rather. And then, of course, uh, he had that one year where he was the Sacramento Kings head coach. So the coaching aspect, he's done it already. You know, so he, he'll be treading uh, different waters when it comes to that AD job. And it's still, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough uh, because you come into a new conference uh, and he's got to hit the ground running. And some of this is, uh, is going to be on the job training for him. No doubt about it. And the greatest challenge, as you say, the coaching part so it seemed to be an easy transition for him because he has that background. But with the demands now of today's athletic director, you have to be a fundraiser. There's no doubt about it. And I'm not just talking about setting up money guarantee games, but you're going to have to go out there and build relationships throughout the community. And my question is, where will you find time between being an athletic director a head basketball coach, or being able to fulfill those obligations. All I can say that whoever is number two is is going to have to earn their biscuits. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's obvious that whoever's in, already in place, they're going to have to carry the bulk of the, the, the work while he gets his feet wet. I mean, he, he's got to put together a staff for his basketball program. He's got to, they got to look at the athletes and the recruits. So there, there's a lot of things that will be going on and then you got to start a football, which is, in their case, that's their cash cow. So, so uh, his time, uh, I can see a lot, a lot of long days for him. Yes, sir. We're talking right now with Coach Van Petaway on the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Coach, uh, with this new twist of things coming on, we've talked about it on a few occasions with the NIL and the Deals are beginning to heat up. Some reality is setting in right now. They're saying, that, hey, we realize that not every student athlete is going to get what they think they're worth and the potentials of cutting out the institutions who are now going to be looked at as the middleman. This thing is going to get worse before they can ever come to a real logical solution. So what do you think, Coach? Right. right. I, 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 don't, I think that they rushed into it. They, there, there was not a lot of... Um, they more research and input, I think, should have taken place uh, because you this thing could really blow up on them. I think it could create dissensions on some teams uh, because I know if I was a student athlete and a uh, guy whose locker is next to mine is signed a, a million dollar deal and here I am struggling to uh, make ends meet with nothing. Uh, I, I might be looking at him side eyes, you know. So I, I don't think this is the best for right now. 
Uh, but we just got to roll with the punches now because it's done. And and we just got to see how this thing is going to play out. Uh, I thought that the best thing for them to do was to come up with a model where all the athletes were able to benefit across the board instead of marketing a few. I think in marketing a few, that's going to hurt the overall morale of some of these teams. Well, Coach, let me ask you this. Let me play devil's advocate just for a moment because you made a point that if one teammate has a better deal than the other teammate, isn't that the same, though, in the professional ranks? You have your quarterbacks, receivers, running backs. They get all the limelight. They get the big deals and uh, the, the linemen and um, the people who do the yeoman's work. They're the ones with the minimum contracts. Do you think it's going to be the same type of, I guess, approach? Yeah, but here's the, here's the thing, Dr. Prince. What you just talked about, that's on the professional level. We're supposed to be amateurs. If we're amateurs, why, why, why are we even discussing this? You know, but, but I, and I think that's the problem. I think that's what the people are saying. Now you, you're turning the college athletics into something professional. And, yeah. and I think that's going to hurt the integrity of the game. I think all you're doing is you create more, uh, you you create more loopholes for people to actually cheat. Oh, no doubt about that. No doubt about that. But in response, hadn't they always been making money throughout college athletics? But everybody was getting paid, but the ones who was out there generating the ticket sales. Yeah, that's that that's true. The, the administration and the university. They're the ones that, that, that have been profiting off of these athletes. That's why I say uh, across the board stipend. I think there's enough money being brought in that you can go back. In, in, in the old days, now back in the 60s and 70s, some of the people can remember, former athletes can remember, that you used to get what they call laundry money. They gave everybody a stipend, and that was for you to use you know, for personal uh, for your personal being, we should go back to something like that. Give these kids a certain amount of money across the board while they are matriculating through college. And I think that, that will solve some of the issues that they're having now because they're not getting anything. You know, well, what, about the, what, about, what about the institutions who are crying poor, mouth? Well, we don't have it. We can't afford it. Well, okay, that's why you got to get in your lane. Get in your lane, okay? Are you saying this because you you're trying to be you are a struggling Division One program? Well, maybe maybe if you reassess things, you shouldn't be Division One. You should drop drop down. Your budget should dictate what level you play on. If you're not putting the money into it, don't be in Division One. Go to another level. Drop down, Division Two, NAIA. Drop down to where your money fits, fits the program. The perfect scenario of wanting to have your cake and eat it too, huh? Right, there it is. Wow. Well, when you when you look at the adventures coming down the road, it makes one wonder: Is it worth? And I'm going to use this very loosely. A being in athletics administration, and B even coaching. Right, right. It, it's creates. It's going. This thing is going. It's creating so many different problems. You got. You, you got schools that we know cannot afford to give the athletes what they actually need or what the other athletes are getting, and that creates a problem. That creates a problem. Well, we can always, I guess, see where the problem lies. What is the solution? I heard you say across the board stipend, where the money comes from, who knows, or the people, as they say, hiding their hands as they throw the rocks to say what they don't have when they actually have it. And, you know, you look at contracts and, and deals, and I'm speaking more or less now toward the smaller divisions, mid-majors, FCS, right, right. Um, because it's a totally different world, and some of us are under the illusion that is equal, and it's really not equal, no, it's never no. been equal, and it's not designed to ever become equal. So when you look at the reality for what it is, what's the answer 
the mid markets or the mid majors and the FCS world. Well, well I, I think it's this: instead of the administration taking all the money, use a percentage of that money to set up a stipend program from the athlete for the athlete. Now, that money is not coming from the institution. That's coming from the games that those kids are playing. And they're the ones bringing in this money. So you take your football and your basketball teams, you're making them play these guaranteed games anyway, use a portion of that money to give all athletes, not just basketball and football, give all athletes a stipend. And that can be done. That's why I refer to you as the guru and the godfather because <laughs> it's just that plain and just that simple. You're talking about worst-case scenario, 450 student athletes on a campus right. Right. and with the money that is generated, and you can come up with an equal distribution formula, right. and everyone gets it. For the most part, you can you could take $100,000 off of one of these guarantee games or the guarantee funding pool, if you would, and have some left over for your student athletes. You have a lot right. left over for your student athletes. Correct, correct. And, and and that's what I'm saying. And that's that does not that money does not directly come from your institution. So that you know they didn't have that money in the beginning. So use that instead of what the the model is right now, especially in the HBCUs. Let these kids go out there. They play all these games. They bring in all this money. And they don't see any of it. But now that you've come up with this NIL, you got the cost of living. And there, there's so much. There's there's so much money that a student athlete could actually be getting. That some of these schools cannot afford to do it. And this is a way. This is just one of the ways. And then the other way is for that athletic director to do what's in his job description. Be a fundraiser. Go out there and, and entice the corporate community to give money to your institution. And then you can use that money, if you're successful at it, to give stipends to these athletes. Well, here comes the devil's advocate angle yet again. With the NIL, as we referred to earlier, why would the corporation want to be even talking to the institution when they can go straight to the student athlete for a lot less money? Right, and and see, and that's and that's that's create that in itself creates another problem because now the NIL is not going to be across the board for every athlete. It's only going to be for certain athletes. So that, that that's just like so we we pull up for practice. All right, here's a guy pulling up in a Mercedes. I'm walking. I don't, I, I don't – he's got a Mercedes because he's got the NIL. But I, I can't. But that guy would not be what he is if it were not for me. So he, he's the brand. He's the top name out there. But he didn't get there by him or herself. Absolutely. The That's other, why they the call other, it a team sport. Right. The other, the other teammates are – part of that person's success. But when it comes to benefits and the NIL, he or she is the one that's bringing in the money. And that looks bad for me. So that's why I think it's going to create dissension on some things. So that, that's human nature. It's human nature, and the Pandora's box hasn't even been fully opened yet. It's just cracked. Right. We already got a whole bunch of things going from here, there, and everywhere. And I guess they say we'll see how the rest of the story unfolds. Here's the thing. I, I know these guys do their one and done, and I guess they figure that they don't have a, a chance or, or see themselves as a legitimate college student, and they have to do this as part of the prerequisites to go to the next level. Um, you would think that, that they have set something up to look out for these kids' future on the educational side. Well, some some of them do, you know that. That's what the G League, G League start doing that. And then uh -huh. the other thing that they, 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 that they are trying to do or uh, have done, last year was the first year where a kid didn't even have to go to college, and he was guaranteed at least a half a million dollars if he went straight to the G League. And and I think 
three of the three top kids that that should be in the in school this fall, they have chosen to go to the G League and they're gonna take that money versus trying to go overseas to make it. Well, that's another really version of the NIL. Just yep. without the college yep. uh, input right. on it. Right. You don't you don't have to go to class. You make it this money <laughs> and, and, and there are no classes involved. Yeah, you yes, have to correct. Yes, sir. So if I think I'm a one and done, instead of me wasting time and possibly damaging my image as a student, I just go to the G League, make me a little change until I'm ready to go to the next level. Right, for that one year, yes. Yes. Wow. Yep. Wow. There are all kind of loopholes, aren't there? Yes, there are. Yes, there are. Yep. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Meanwhile, we try to hold it together and keep doing what needs to be done. Coach, I can't tell you how much I gain from you every time I sit down at your feet and, and let you pour out, you know, the the stuff that you're coming right off the top of your head, man, like it's just been in the data system for forever and a day. And that's why experience is going to always be great. Wisdom is always going to be even better. And the chance to tell your story is greatly, greatly appreciated. We're coming to the time now, Coach, where I'm going to allow you to have some closing thoughts as we finish today's segment up. The floor is now yours. Well, I I just hope that a a solution is found for these athletes. I think that you need to look closer at what can happen across the board versus a few. Uh, That's just like uh, here, here this weekend. You, you saw where uh, the kid at Tennessee State signed as a $2 million NIL deal, and I think that's Master P's son uh, who, who is going to attend Tennessee State for basketball. I just think we need to come up with something that's equitable for every, all the athletes, not just a few. And I just think that uh, they need to go back to the drawing board and uh, come up with ways and ideas that you can benefit all the athletes. And then the Dr. Prince, finally, uh, you're bringing this to light as you do many other topics that are important to to all of us. And we want to thank you and continue doing the great work that you're doing uh, to make sure that the true, true picture is being painted. Well, sir, we thank you. It's because of guests like you who help us get the message out there. I'm just a man with a mic you guys tell the story and I just try to give a platform where the story can be told from all angles necessary and then those that are listening can come up with a conscious decision on which way they want to lean he is the godfather the guru the analyst of the open mic broadcast network when it comes to basketball and just plain old life coach Van Petaway I am the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. Thank you guys so much for joining us on the Brazos Valley Students Credit Union Hotline. And until the next time, you guys be blessed. We'll see you on the other side.